Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel. My name is Greg and this video is going to be all about the Algo Alpha 20 watt laser machine with the included air assist kit and variable speed air pump. Welcome back and thanks for joining me for another video on the Laser Channel. Before I start, I wanna let you know that this is a sponsored video. This machine was sent to me by Algo for me to take a look at and share with you viewers. This is going to be the first of two videos. This first video, I'm going to do the unboxing, assembly, and the configuration of the machine with Lightburn software. I'm gonna show you just how quick and easy that is. And throughout the unboxing and assembly, I am going to share with you some of the key high points of what makes this machine unique to the market. In the second video, I'm going to be doing all test projects, including cutting three quarter inch pine board. Algo makes the claim that this 22 watt laser machine can cut through three quarter inch pine board along with multicolor marking of metal. So I'm gonna do all of that in the second video. I'm really excited to jump in this box and kind of see what all the contents are and get this all put together. Now, this is going to be the first time that I see the contents. This is still factory sealed. I've had this box for about a week now and I resisted the temptation to open it beforehand because I wanted to share the first glimpses with you. Some of the things that make this machine very unique to the market, because there are a number of 20 and 22 watt laser machines on the market, is this adapts a second generation COS system for the laser module. And in short, what that means is it's using second technology of combining the laser beam to a more focused beam across the power spectrum. Now inside of the box here, we're greeted by all of the manuals as soon as you open up the box. So that is pretty cool. In the second generation of how Algo is combining the laser beams into one laser beam is going to enhance the laser beam performance by up to 40%. And one of the really neat things about that is it's going to make that spot beam shape more of a square rather than a rectangle that are found on most of the first generations. Now, when I pull all of this out, the first thing that I really see is that everything has this nice black foam and everything has its own compartment. And again, that laser beam spot technology, that spot laser is also going to be up to 40% smaller than the other machines on the market using the, again, that uh, first generation technology. The next piece here, I'm going to carefully remove out because this is going to be the upper gantry that hangs onto the laser and it has the wiring harness already attached to the laser module. The last thing that I have to open up is the air pump. Now, before I start talking about the air pump, I did want to touch base on the controller board that runs the main machine. This machine is being ran by a dual processor uh, controller board. The air pump box, once again, I'm greeted by some nice manuals on the top and this nice protective black foam. Inside, I've got a package here with an accessory cable and the main air pump. And this main air pump does connect up to the main machine and it does have an inline controller for controlling the airflow out of the air pump. So this is definitely going to be a pretty neat setup. With everything out of the box, I'm gonna take a look at some of the package contents here. Starting out with this content here, this is going to be for supporting the machine and we'll see what's inside. I've got uh, another manual and this is a quick start guide and it has all of the assembly directions with nice full color page uh, instructions on everything. So this should make assembly a real quick breeze. The other content is this laser engraving consumables package and we'll take a look at everything that is inside here. And again, I've got a nice thick piece of plywood, a zip tie for part of the assembly, and I've got some what looks like eighth inch black acrylic and a thin aluminum business card. 
a very thick piece of black acrylic that looks like it's 10 millimeters thick. So in the next video, we'll be cutting all the way through this. There's just a couple more things in here, taking them out carefully. I've got a couple pieces of Velcro again for the assembly portion of the laser. I'll put those by the zip ties. And there's a couple of more uh, business cards along with this uh, thin piece of sheet metal. And this machine also states that it can cut through very thin sheet metal. So we're going to see if we can cut through this and also multicolor mark this. So that again will be coming up in the second video. And the last pieces and parts out of this box is some MDF board that is a little bit thicker than an eighth inch. And again, we'll be cutting that and a nice brush for cleaning debris away from cutting or engraving and a few more zip ties. There's also this small box here and I'm opening this for the first time. And this includes the safety key that goes on the control panel. If you've got little ones at home or you just don't want somebody using the machine while you're not around it, you can lock the machine and remove this key and the machine will not be able to operate. So a pretty neat safety feature. There's also the assembly screws and the wrenches and a maintenance wrench for any adjustments for the machine over the lifespan. Taking a look at the frame members here, they're already pre-assembled with just putting the major frame members together and this is going to cut down the assembly time dramatically. The other area that's really going to speed up the assembly of the machine is the wiring harness. It's already pre-ran throughout the frame of the machine. The last thing that I'd like to draw your attention to is this motor here for moving the laser module around. This is one of the largest motors that I've seen on a tabletop laser diode machine. And this is to achieve the speed of 400 millimeters per second movement. I see a lot of machines on the market that claim that speed and they will get up to that speed, but because of the smaller motor size that they're using, it takes a while for the machine to get up to that speed. But with the larger motor, it gets up to that speed much faster, reducing your cutting and engraving times down considerably. Next up is going to be a time-lapse assembly of the machine. Using the quick start guide made easy work of assembling the machine. And I can put this off to the side until I'm ready to connect the machine up to the computer. I can also take the assembly tools and put them back in this little accessory package and also place this off to the side. The last thing I'm going to do is connect the air assist pump up to the main machine. I'll start by connecting the air line between the pump and the machine. One end has this nice supple connector that slips easily onto the air pump. The other end has this quick mounting metal connector and that goes up to the air line that's permanently attached to the machine. The last connection is the electrical connector from the air pump going up to the main machine and that is found on the side and this plugs in very conveniently and easily. Before I connect the machine up to the light burn software for the first time, let's do a quick fly around of the machine with the camera. Here's the electrical connectors found on the side of the machine, the main power, the air pump connector, and the computer port. Across the front of the machine, we have the main power button, 
the safety key switch, and I'll place the key in right now and make sure it's in the on position. And we have an e-stop button. I'll rotate that to make sure that it is reset. Setting the focus on the laser is fast and easy. Located on the laser module itself is a black lever. When I push this all the way down, it exposes the focusing limit down at the bottom here. Behind the laser module is this silver lever. When I move this in the full down position, it releases the laser module so it can move up and down for proper focusing. I can set the focus and return the silver lever back in place, locking the laser in place. And then I can press this black button and that will retract that focusing lever. Pretty ingenious. Located behind the control panel is the main controller board. And again, that has the dual CPU that has a 32% higher CPU performance and a 50% improved energy efficiency. You can also upload your files much faster with this 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi antenna. Off camera, I connected power up to the machine and the USB cable between my computer and the machine. And now the next thing is to power the machine on for the very first time. We'll see sometimes machines will automatically home when they're first powered up and we'll see if that's the case with the Elgo Alpha machine. Oh, look at that. We've got some movement already. But now let's jump into Lightburn and get connected to the machine for the very first time. Welcome to Lightburn software. To connect the new machine up, we're gonna be focusing mainly down in this area. And we'll see when I pull down my uh, machine list that I've had quite a few other machines connected up to Lightburn. When I've got this, I find oftentimes a brand new machine is going to try and connect on one of the COM ports already. Now, in order to auto detect a new machine, this middle box here has to say choose. If it says anything else, Lightburn software is going to have a very hard time finding a new machine. With that selected, now I can click on devices, find my laser, and after just a couple of seconds, it populates with this. I'm going to click add device, and what would I like to call it? I'll call it the Algo Alpha. That looks good. And the homing or the origin of the laser is in the front left corner. I'm going to turn off the auto home that's just my preference. I like to hit the home button and know that then I'll have motion on the machine, but use whatever works best for you. This looks good and I'll hit next. And here I've got a dialog box where some of the text is cut off and I found if I can go to the dialog corner box and I can grab that corner with my mouse and stretch it out. And here it'll give me a complete summary of everything. This all looks good and I can click finish and OK. Now I can go back to my machine drop down menu. I'll go all the way down to the bottom to Elgo Alpha. And I'm now connected. And to test this out, I'm going to hit the home button and see if the machine reacquires the home position. Absolutely perfect. Let me draw out just a simple box in the work area. And it doesn't matter if it's a line or an engraving. I'm going to make sure that the output is on and I'll hit the frame button and see if it traces that out. That's absolutely perfect. It only took about one or two minutes to configure the Lightburn software to automatically find the Elgo laser machine. While I'm still in light burn, I just have to check out this 400 millimeter per second speed. During the assembly, we saw that huge motor that's gonna help drive this laser module around. It's one of the biggest motors that I've seen on one of these desktop laser diode machines. So in light burn, I drew a very large circle 
and I put the speed at that maximum of 400 millimeters per second. I set the power level to zero because I just don't want to put the goggles on. I don't need to engrave anything. I just want to check out the sheer speed of the machine. And let's not do six passes of the circle. Let's draw this circle out six times. I'm all set to go and I'm going to hit the start button. Wow, check out that speed and just how smooth the machine is. This is pretty awesome. Wow, that really is smooth as silk. And this thing is just pretty impressive. And I can't wait to make the second video where I'm putting some materials down and we really run this machine through its paces. Thanks for joining me in this first video on the Algo Alpha 22 watt laser machine. It's a nice, fun and easy setup and assembly of the machine. And I really enjoyed sharing some of the high points which really make this machine unique and a high performing machine. Join me in the second video where I'll be cutting out some three quarter inch pine, some 10 millimeter black acrylic, and I'm gonna try my hand at color marking some metal. That's something I've never done before. So we'll be learning together on that one. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel or ring that notification bell. Not only does it help me out, but it's a great way to connect content like this with great viewers like you. Until we meet again, learn, create, and share.